You know, Samantha's it's not just a something. man's no, world. No, I don't know what she's going to do now. Yeah, oh, I know precisely what she's going to do. I, I do hope you enjoy this. Yeah, this, uh, is, this should be good. This should be... But welcome to On The Overrun. This is a very cool episode for us, uh, Luke and I. As you can see, there are quite a few... Can't stop awesome smiling about this now at the moment. So. Us. Um, we have gotten the privilege to chat to a father and daughter, actually, of which the daughter is sitting here next to us. Also a good friend of ours. Yes, we'll introduce her now. Um, but we are very privileged to be able to chat to them today to find out why they are passionate about cars, what they do, they are... Um, but firstly, co-host, as always, Luke Giesler, welcome. Good day, everyone, or good, good evening, wherever you are. This beard is still as good as it was last I time. I shaved it again, I'm sorry. Um, we have not yet released our beard oil. It will be coming probably in th three months. My car hasn't leaked enough oil yet for yeah. me to start doing that. So hasn't I'm started working on that car. So on the Land Rover, so we're still waiting for that. But yeah. we'll get there. We'll see, we'll see. Um, but otherwise, I want to thank you for joining in. Um, you are either watching or listening, which is awesome. Um, thank you for the support you've been giving us. Thank you for the comments, the engagement. Um, I really urge you on to share this podcast um, because what we are trying to do is to share the appreciation and love we have for cars mm. and actually get people to gather around something as cool as cars. And um, sometimes even the community is much cooler than the cars around it. Yeah, the whole scene that you get and the experiences and stuff that you can share and enjoy with people. I yeah. think that plays almost a bigger role because it's cool to have a car, but it's better yeah. to have more people that have cars as well so you can tell stories and just engage. Yeah. So uh, don't do drugs, rather like cars. <laughs> uh, Stick to cars, yeah. That's a better option <laughs> to go for. Um, but uh, yes, let us introduce our guest for today. We have Samantha Long. Uh, welcome. Nice having you here. It's nice being here. Um, we appreciate your effort in actually speaking English because, yes, she is also Afrikaans. Just like us. So, this is so you'll hear some lacquer and all of that stuff that we Afrikaans people like would to say. You, would you say this is more stressful than your average choir performance? Yes, honestly. <laughs> oh, choir, you actually know what you have to sing. I don't know what I have to say. But, but yeah, but we're just talking about cars. So, I mean, in that sense, it should that be more comfortable. That I know, but um, yeah. still, it's, it's English. Yeah. yeah. So I think you stress more about the words that you're pronouncing than the actual language. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I think they get the idea in anyway, so don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah, so I would also say this is more stressful than your average choir performance because... Um, did you I sing choir, Martin? Yes, I did, actually. Oh, yeah, Great you did. Four. I, I forgot <laughs> but this. Yeah, you did. No, but you but went in my primary school. school. No, but you, you, didn't you sing like we came to the trials or something for choir in high school? No. As well? They would have wasted my talent in choir. <laughs> <laughs> no, my voice, my voice is a very select taste. It's like Marmite. You either love it or you hate it. You understand? Bovril. Yeah, let's go for Bovril. Would you rather go Bovril? Better, okay. better thing for me. Yes. Yeah. So thank you for tuning in for our uh, quick chat about uh, <laughs> Bovril and Quiet Practices. Bovril and Quiet, pla yeah, Bovril and quiet Practices. Um, but hey, yeah, we are actually here to talk about cars, I promise. Um, so on to Samantha, the more important part of this <laughs> podcast. Samantha, yes, uh, you like cars. That we already... Who doesn't? Yes. Yeah, we, well, <laughs> well, there are yeah, actually some there people. Yeah, eh? there's, there's some lost people and in this world, like, you know. Let's get them to we'll like cars. We'll fix them up. People who like cars... So, one of the cool things about Samantha, so just some context, we weren't in the same high school because I was in a boys' school, she was in a girls' school, so it was Luke. And um, I remember we were very good friends in, on high, in high school, and we usually had to, well, had the most insane conversations about cars. And the coolest thing about it was how we could share, how I could share my love for cars with, you know, a girl also, because. In the majority sense, people may see this as a boys' game, you know, a man's world. Well, it is probably male dominated if you look at the like at the numbers, but there are definitely girls who see a lot of interest in cars and who also know their cars. Um, I'm just thinking now of Supergirl Blondie. Yeah, I was about uh, to say Supergirl Blondie is the first yeah, one that springs to mind. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so jealous of the car she's. Miss Emma Walsh as well. Miss Emma Walsh, yeah. yeah. So there are there are quite a few YouTubers, influencers, girls who really like cars and actually, um, you know, have their voices heard. Like, I mean, do take their opinions on it. So, firstly, it's very cool having you on. You know, for you loving cars, knowing your cars, also sharing your passion of cars with your dad, um, with 
usually it's like a father son kind of thing, mm. but now it's I'm the other the way. I'm the son. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been the son. <laughs> the destined one, I know. Um, it was meant to be. So just on that, how would you say your passion for cars came to be? Honestly, I um, I remember my dad and my grandfather loved. They were in the store building cars every weekend and they would I have a cousin he's the same age he also went to school with you guys and they would kind of take him in and show him everything and we were kind of the outcast because I mean who's going to take the girl and show her Mm. the cars but who knew I was going to be the one who actually liked it so I started like feeling like why aren't they you know showing me whatever he's getting and I started you know doing a bit of research and listening when I just started you know, actually loving it. And I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty cool. And I, it was so cool to actually share it with my dad because uh, you're, it's usually a mom and daughter. You don't really have a lot of stuff that you share with your father. But I mean, it's very cool. I love it. So that's basically where it starts. You also love horses. So who do you share that passion with? I made my mom share that with me. <laughs> Forced me into <laughs> I it. I kind of, yeah, I kind of, I, she always... She said she always wanted to ride horses and I started riding horses when I was very young and she kind of grew into it and started loving it as well and now we ride together which is super awesome. So yeah. I have I have a good you ride know, or something die. to share with Ride or die, <laughs> whether it be horses or cars. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. That's so, so I cool. share that with my mom, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so, so it's the equal, equal balance you'd say. Yeah, well, Ooh. Ooh, that, that's a question for another day. Oh, we'll keep, we'll not, keep that for, for some time that last week. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. So how would you say, like, in terms of your friends at school, like your girlfriends, um, did they in some way share the passion you had? How did you go about having this passion for cars? Like, did you even speak about cars around them because i know for for me like of course a lot of guys are like yeah you know cool cars but mm. you go to a guy and you I mean, ask martin like, and i we're the type of guy that if we sit in a class somewhere and you hear a car you'd run to the window what, just, what is that yeah. what is that and you have to see it whether you can just hear it maybe then it's also fine but it's like that kind of thing it's like you run so to the <laughs> in a sense do you go absolutely psycho when you were at school and you could share that passion with someone else if you maybe heard a car go i would share it but they won't it want wasn't, to. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> okay. appreciated. You know, that. But um, I, I, uh, the whole high school, I never found a girl that actually shared it with me. Mm. I had a few friends that I taught. You know, I, t- I taught them everything that I know. Not everything, but I would like, if there's a car passing by, I would like, do you know what that yeah. is? <laughs> and they'd be like, no, I don't. Like, do you want to know what that is? <laughs> yeah. Do you, you care? <laughs> Please care. So, yeah. I kind of shared it with them. They were very cool about it, honestly. They were all like, ah, cool. cool. Just be a supportive <laughs> yeah, girlfriend you for can you. Just, yeah, Enjoy I'm just your supporting life. you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, not really, but that's why I had you guys. Yeah, <laughs> I, I remember, um, like, every now and again, if I find something with it, be well, specifically at the time it was GTRs, I remember very vividly, where I would just on a daily send any video that I can find of a GTR to you on Instagram just because I know she would appreciate it. So it was like... Yeah. <laughs> you you, you'll get the like you'll get the you'll appreciation get the, yeah, just just for that little bit so yeah <laughs> i remember sorry samantha i remember uh, when you speaking about like um when you go through the window check out the car when you hear something mm-hmm. outside um like once in in math class and, and like this actually did happen i would hear something outside and i'd run out well just run to the window i'd be like is that a 6.2 v8 and then my teacher would be like, no, the answer is 13. <laughs> and like, it's like daydreaming in the best sense of, yeah. of the word. Because you just, in your mind, you know exactly what it is. But to try and explain that to someone and just that whole picture that you have, it, it, it doesn't come quite easily yeah. as you would have hoped it to be. But anyway. Yeah. Can I sidetrack a bit here? Yeah. I remember we had a dance the one night at Blumhoff. And my dad actually... <laughs> He dropped me off. We he had a Porsche at the time, a Panamera 4S, a Turbo, and he was such a, a <clears throat> anyway. So he took Call me fanatic. past. <laughs> yeah, let's just say that. Okay. <laughs> he took me past both of the boys' high school, the hostels, uh-huh. and he just started raving outside. <laughs> yes. And he yes. just loved that it. I was the there like, yeah, please don't, <laughs> please don't. Please do don't. This to me. That's that so good. That's yeah. actually so cool the because thing that you go for. I think that's the only way how you should do it. I mean, yeah. that should be the the benchmark to use. I mean, if you can, why not? 
Yeah, you know, if your car has it, flaunt it. Exactly. Right? That's how oh. I think about it. I, I think know. so. You might think differently, but... It was embarrassing, but I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Deep it's down like inside you, you don't, in your car you don't know which side you're leaning to. Like, yeah. oh, I love the sound, but oh no, everybody's going to look at me. Yeah. It's very, but it was so fun. <laughs> but I think, yeah, a lot of people, like, remember the cars and they, like, saw you coming out of it, like, wow, you know, but nobody would actually know what it was. Like, um, oh, okay. <laughs> the random phone started ringing, but that's that's fine. At the back that, the that's what you unfortunately get on this podcast. <laughs> Very low <laughs> the risk. Best. Only the best for Only you guys. Only the best. Um, so, Samantha, we, we lightly touched on the topic of a Nissan GTR. Now, I wanted to ask you what your poster car was as a child, but... I think you can just go ahead and tell about the GTR. Why the GTR? Why the GTR? Honestly, do I even need a reason? Do I? I That's think valid. you don't, because I feel the same as you. But I'd do, like but to Martin, hear one. Yeah, Martin might like to hear one. Well, the GTR is just, it's just insane. I mean, the performance that you get from that car, yeah, it's from what unthinkable from built that. into the car, yeah. I mean, you won't expect that from a 3.8 liter V6 twin turbo, you just won't. But I mean, also it has a big impact in the car industry. I mean, from the, the 32, the 33, all the way up to 35, mm. there's a weird GTR 50. Yeah, that they're looking at that looks a bit, hmm. <laughs> oh, the Ital design. Yeah, I yeah it looks that. very and like they, futuristic. They did a, uh, um, a, I think it's a 35 or 36 homage or something to... That's 36, yeah. Yeah. And to honor Paul Walker. Yeah, yeah, yes. the Paul Walker homage that oh, they did. I haven't and even it looks seen that. Very, very good. I the, love that. It's like R34 on steroids. But so it's like, yeah, it's like R34 would with the nose of the 35 and then they just call it a 36. I mean... That's insane. It's honestly lovely. No, it's, it's really, it's a stunning car. It. Um, yeah, you guys will see pictures of it, don't worry. Well, uh... Okay, so I... Li some... Some haters of the of the Nissan GTR might say that the main reason they they wouldn't buy a GTR or be interested in one is because it's a Nissan. Now, as Jeremy is, Clarkson would call it, a Datsun. <laughs> it is a Datsun GTR. Yeah. So, what would be your comment on that? Because I know for some people it might be very aggravating. Like it's like calling calling a 911 a Beetle. Like I know. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but please don't. Like, it really just makes me angry. There's a lot of times I've angered Martin by saying, talking about a Beetle, or even saying, like, all P Porsches look alike. But, you know, that was a... My dad <laughs> does that to me, though. <laughs> Honestly, when he said that about the Nissan, the first thing I thought about was my dad. We saying. were sitting at um, Crosley and Webb yeah, in yeah, Cape yeah. Town, and we were having a coffee, and I was just, you know, because we were looking at one of the cars, and it was lovely. I think it was an SLS, a Mercedes, but... We were talking about, and I was like, but yo, let's just get a GTR, please. It's so <laughs> lovely. You, you won't regret it. And he goes, okay, think about this. If I sit in here and my alarm goes out outside and I'm driving a Nissan GTR, the person running in is going to be like, someone's Nissan's alarm is gone <laughs> oh, off. No. But if you're driving a Ferrari, the person's going to run in and be like, someone's Ferrari's oh, no. alarm has gone off. And you're going to be like, that's me. That's <laughs> true. I haven't thought about that. I haven't exactly. thought about that. But, that, uh, but I don't think you... Okay, you... Uh, yeah, what's, the, what's the company in America who you basically go to cars... Yeah, well, you go to the company to get a quote. It's like, um, I can't remember what the company is. I'll get it now. Uh, it's not Carfax. It's something else. In any way, um, that just made me think now about the Nissan you said. So I once saw uh, a YouTuber, the Strad Man. He actually took in a Bugatti Veyron to get a quote on the car. But they could only quote oh. a maximum. Do you remember? Yeah, they yeah, could only yeah. quote the, a maximum of of two hundred thousand dollars. And also, they don't have a Bugatti Veyron on the system. So what they put in was a V8 Volkswagen Beetle, <laughs> two thousand and eight for two hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that was the maximum quote they could I know, give you. I know you. what you're talking about because I've seen this. It's like a trend uh, in American um, car YouTubers to take their cars Why and get an appraisal not, for it. Um, yeah. and it's in place and it's hectically it's like a quarter it's at least like a quarter of the value of the actual car but i can't remember the, the company's name it's the best thing you'll watch so they'll like sit gopros everywhere in the car and you'll catch the reaction of the guy coming out with his clipboard and then he checks everything and does the whole setup it's yeah it's the best thing to watch it's, it's very funny 
but yeah, so with the Nissan, well, the GTR, they'll probably say like, uh, somebody's uh, Nissan Micra is, uh, <laughs> is someone's just Nissan Micra is a long Anything going off. you just um, connect with Nissan Micra with it. Reading out the, uh, like the number plates and stuff, that would be quite funny. Um, but in terms of GTRs, like just to... But let's, um, not, let's not diss the Nissan name too badly. I'm driving no, the Nissan. Listen, so I'm, oh yeah, the Durano. But GTRs <laughs> don't often leak as much oil. As it's true. So update. Well, this car has five hundred thousand kilometers on it. So Luke, would I you mean, like to give the update or like a live life update on the the current state of the Toronto? So the current state of the Toronto, the roof is leaking. So after this hectic rain that we had, it's got a sunroof, but it we haven't like opened fish. the thing in like ten days, um, and it's just, you know, you just at a certain point you think if I drive this car off a damn wall. I won't Ma regret it. Yeah, will it make a difference? It probably won't make a difference. Um, the other day I was driving around and the exhaust actually fell off um, just underneath the header. <laughs> this and was so funny. It sounded like a diesel tractor, but with an oversized <laughs> turbo, like a straight pipe diesel tractor. And it was just exhaust fumes through the dashboard. And yeah, it wasn't fun. But you know, it takes me from point A to point B. So I'm very thankful for the car. But 500,000 kilometers is a lot for something that's probably might keep a few years still I'm, yeah. I'm not putting my hopes up sorry mom and dad i don't know i think the car's time has come but in terms of first cars you have a very nice first car and like <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> thank you but the audi a1 we haven't spoke about the audi a1 yet we have not no. but we have lightly touched on touched on the a1 quattro mm -hmm. um but how do you find the a1 do you enjoy it? I like the look of it. Obviously, I love the car. It's I I wanted an A3, but I'm I'm glad I got the A1 because I probably wouldn't have had the same. What? No, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of a story now because I I remember the first. I think it was like the first week that you got the car, and we were at school before um, school, actually in the morning. Yeah, we used to. And you, you yeah, we were used to gather, and you called me and said, "Come, come, 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 quickly, quickly!" <laughs> yeah, Jumped in the car, and then she just blasted the music and I was actually quite I was quite surprised yeah. I did not expect a yeah. proper sound system from that small tiny it's car lovely. it's, it's proper decent, so hey? that was the immediate thing and then I thought wow okay this car is actually this car is nice so I mean it has a 1.6 turbo yeah, diesel it's it's yeah let's proper. not go about it's yeah okay let's we won't go on sound about. systems I'm sorry I'm just yeah. being myself anyway. and we also won't be slamming this A1 you won't be slamming the A1 right you won't be taking the suspension out Fixing because I've, I've seen some videos skirts. Now, Luke and I, we have, an, we have expressed our, uh, how do we put it, frustration, irritation. Probably. With um, people who drive slam dialuxes with 22-inch low profiles. Oh, yeah, that's low the profiles. best thing. You have these purple neon lights. Yes. Um, and then the, the headlights are changed. It looks like a BMW coming at you, uh, uh, like a GS motorbike or something, because it's just yellow headlights the whole road full. So, um, and then it's also straight pipe, obviously, like Martin said. Uh, and that movement yeah. have, has moved to Audi A1s. I've seen videos of people scratching the bottoms of the Audi A1s because of... Just you why? Know, it's just it's why? Just it is low. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, why would you... Yeah, why would you take it even lower? I don't know. But aside from Audi A1s, some more interesting... Um, Idiocracy is it. ruling the world, guys. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> so... You have had some insane experiences with your dad and with cars, you know, some races you've attended, um, events you've been to, maybe chat around that a bit. I know of Samola Hill Climb. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so Samola Hill Climb is obviously the first thing I think of when you say events with your dad. So it actually, I'm like the only girl there because it's my dad, my uncle and my grandfather and they all share the same passion. Actually, the first time we went there, because I'm such a GTR fan, um, and you, it's not a like an all-day car that you yeah, just see yeah, on the yeah, road, yeah. really. So when I I started crying, guys. They're just so lovely. And I know there was a... I, I remember seeing the videos because there was a particular GTR, like the I think it was blue, but I can't remember exactly what blue it was um, at the Samola Hill Climb. Did it have like yellow... Headlights. I think so. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, it, Samantha it, sent you that photo. <laughs> yeah, it lost its fl front split at a point. I don't know. The thing was about like this big, and it. I just remember the, with a video where it went and these little consecutive bumps. It just skirted to the side, and the car just kept on going. 
Do you like, think, are you talking about the blue or the black one? Like Scrabanti's one that he had. That I have no idea. I just stuff. saw a video of, I knew it was a Simola hill climb and a GTR losing its, its, uh, its uh, splitter in the front. But it was still a stunning car nonetheless, with, with or without the meter long splitter. But it just is. Yeah. yeah. You just, you can't go wrong. You can't go <laughs> wrong. I mean, it's, it's a stunning, stunning, stunning car. Sorry, Martin. We yeah, that's fine. That's we're fine. We're I, going away from Porsches now. Let's just get, get just some Porsches into Samantha Martin. Just to to say, back, that's all. Back to. I just want to hear what Samantha has to say about Sorry. the hill climb also. Yes. So basically, um, any event I would, obviously you go to, but any event with my dad is, I love it. It's it's so it's such a a different feeling. The vibe, the people, the cars, um, the sounds, the gurgling, and so at Samola, that's probably I've we usually we're very privileged to be able to um, sit at the VIP, the Jaguar Lounge, and then you have all the the um, older ladies and their husbands are driving the cars and they all have muffs and stuff on because it's just so <laughs> loud. And then I sit there and I'm like, how Yo, even, why aren't I mean, you enjoying this? Enjoy this is even, so yeah, yes. I'm just supporting my husband, but I don't really care. But it's so... it's I, You can't really explain it, though. Mm. I mean, the feeling that you get when you walk through the pits and you see those engines and the people revving and... It's just a different... Very exciting. It feeds your soul. It's very exciting, it just yeah. yeah. it does, just does, does hey, good you things. Just yeah. feel like you don't need food because you just had. <laughs> One of yeah. the... So, in terms of car YouTubers and such, I know this might sound off topic, but it's not. So, one of the most insane car events or festivals around the world, um, and most popular is also the Goodwood Festival Speed. Um, and this also reminds me of Samola in some way where... You see people walking through um, the so-called pits, the tents, the people working on the cars, going to check it out, hearing the sounds. Yeah, getting up and close with, with And all everyone the is there just gathering around the cars. Um, so, I mean, I haven't been to such an event as Samola or as, you know, Goodwood. Um, but what a dream it would be, I think, for me also, I said it in the first episode, mm, it's mm. about the people and about sharing that passion. No, like people when you hear event, a car, so. when you see a car, what do you want to do? You want to share it with someone immediately. Or you want to run to it and then you want to completely freak out and lose your mind and then you want to share it. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, yeah. Samantha, so one last question. This may, this may be difficult, but one last question. So if you can choose any car now, any car and any road. The road has to be in, in South Africa, okay? Any car, any road to go for a drive, weekend drive. Okay, we, we know what the car is. No, I no. mean, <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> easy. To a, I knew it was a micro. <laughs> 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 okay. Apparently, they're making a Nismo V. I'm joking. A Nismo micro. Oh, my gosh. Just no. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, definitely the GTR. I haven't driven one. Well, I have driven in one. I haven't driven yes, one. Yes, okay. Actually, I, I was so sorry. <laughs> Such a, Go for it. I was privileged to um, be able to drive with this experienced um, driver, and he drifted with a GTR 35 <laughs> on Kilani, th Kilani track. Wow. And yeah. it just, just wow. I have no I, words. Just wow. <laughs> I was sick after it, but it was so cool. Ew. Ew. Um, road? Can't I take a track? Does it have to be I a suppose, road? I okay, suppose. Okay. No. Yeah. No. I let's think it keep has it to. Be, yeah, let's keep to it to road. Public, yeah. yeah. Let's keep it to road. You need to be able to take your car now and go to it. Yeah. You don't need to pay any fees or stuff. It's just going to that section of road. I think Franschuk. Franschuk Pass. Pass. Yeah. 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 Look, would approve. Yeah. I would, I would approve. also approve. Obviously, Very yeah, good yeah, road. I mean, yeah. Very okay, good road. Thank you. Yeah. It um, wouldn't have mattered though. So <laughs> <laughs> my choice. Yeah. <laughs> But Samantha, thank you very much yeah, for your time. Thank you very much. We will be getting on your dad to continue the conversation. But firstly, from me and Luke, what an honor, what a privilege chatting to a girl who knows her cause. Yeah, who that's, yeah. Might, yeah, now and then she actually proves us wrong about every, knowledge every about now cause. Again, yeah, you know. That's it to the pride. Uh, you Just know, another person the ego. that I can share passion for artificial yeah. files with as well. Um, so but yeah, Samantha, thank you. I hope yeah, you enjoyed it. Much, we enjoyed yeah. it. And yeah, um, I loved it. Yeah, until, until the next. Uh, GTR, GTR comment on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> to the next GTR comment. Cool. Oh, there we go. Here we go, guys. Um, so we have Samantha's dad here. Yeah? Thank you very much for joining us and Back giving us the, the, yeah, the chance to, to chat a bit about the passion that we, as we've said, share. 
um, and just to hear some stories and stuff from you. From a much um, more experienced individual yeah, than yeah. us. <laughs> so we were a bit longer in the system than, than we are. We, we're still getting to the experience and stuff that you have. Well, I'm hoping that we will we'll get to that It's level. actually why we have guests because we don't have much experience yeah, to talk that's, about. That's the other thing as well. In the first place. Yes, yes. Um, but welcome. Thank you very much. It is, a, it is a massive privilege having you here also and um, to be here uh, in your pride and joy. Um, also with Samantha, Samantha sitting there, she's uh, yeah, going to have quite a laugh at this one. You have quite a laugh <laughs> while she's <spoke, laughs> she so talking. So now I'm, sure, I'm sure this will be very enjoyable. Yeah. Um, but Luke, if you'd like to kick us off. Sorry, I just have to double check that I'm doing the right thing because otherwise... Oh, okay. uh, yeah. We'd like to be professional now and then. Just, uh, just a little bit, yeah. Um, so I think the first thing is just to, um, yeah, if it's fine with you, introduce yourself a bit and just tell us a bit about where the passion started for for these things that we call cars and we love so much. Um, yeah, just a bit of a background and then and, and where, where it is now and where you, um, it might go in the future. Yeah, well, this, is, this started as a job. My... Dad and my brother, we all love cars, and as little boys, my dad used to buy up some off-road Jeeps and stuff like that, mm. and we'll strip it down and rebuild it up, and, and we would play with it in the mud and go a bit hill climbing or, or proper yeah. hill climbing, yes, yes. but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. enjoying it and then selling it off and then buy something else, and that is was sure it wasn't quite a few years ago and we, as children we started doing that and from then it just started growing and there was always a car that something was done or worked on in a store yeah. or in a workshop or at a garage and doing this or doing that and then me and my brother just kept on doing it so we built got projects we bought, bought stuff up boulder hot rod built this yeah and it just took time but but it's something that we all loved and yeah. as samantha mentioned earlier Saturdays used to be, the, there's no question what we did weekends. Weekends was Driving. in the garage. You were there Working. Saturday, Sundays, and, and that's just building stuff, building cars, what, maybe repairing or building a trailer. We also got a passion for, for motorcycles and quads mm. and, and side-by-sides. And so that was also a passion, enjoying the side-by-sides, weekends, mm. going away, playing in the mud, come back, <laughs> and have to clean them, get a properly clean service, yes, yes, and doing all, all the, the stuff, and learning them because they like to go play when it comes to cleaning. That's always <laughs> yeah, a different it's thing. A and we had a ritual is that you go play, you get back, you get cleaned and finished and packed away beforehand. And, and then, later yeah. stage we got spoiled and we had some workers and people helping it, so make it a bit easier. Yes. But yeah, it's, it's, it's something that's been in our family for, for, for always. Yeah, so in a sense where Martin and I were playing with Lego, we were rebuilding a car, so in a sense the car was... Uh, thing that you can just learn yourself and, and it's take it. Lego. it's just a bigger one yeah it's, it's just yeah. a bigger it's a more working adult one version of a bit more maybe. complicated yeah Basically, but yeah. yeah no that's it's true yeah. it's, I couldn't yeah. really you know I, I played with Lego a lot but I couldn't really go and you know rebuild cars or you know see how it works and like take a part off the engine of my dad's car because uh, yeah, as I said he worked for Mercedes and he had <laughs> a car <laughs> that he basically Mercedes, borrowed so yeah. would have been cool to take off the, the air filter or Mercedes such and then dealership would have been happy driver yeah they would have been delighted yeah, no, but they probably they would have enjoyed it quite a lot so. but I think it's yeah. very cool that you actually started your passion of cars in terms of you know, hands on physically building, physically working on it, seeing how the inner workings come to be. Because I think for me and you both, our passion started by <laughs> looking at cars, hearing yeah, things, just, just experiencing the visceral part of it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you actually find someone who truly liked the mechanical part of yeah. it, got used to that, and from there on also Dives got appreciation for, you know, the mechanical marvels that these cars are. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially a few of these cars and also it's a lot of knowledge as well that you can take in and that you can carry and like you said as well to um, teach them and stuff and get it in so try and almost the same as we're doing and, and trying to share our passion and other people's passion with you guys the viewers and the listeners but um, like you try to share it with your children and with the family and everything so to get everyone's interest into that I think that's also a fantastic thing to do so it doesn't um, like fall away and, and, and disappear in a sense so yeah, the thing is with the today's is children or youngsters is that they'll get a car, they'll drive a bit, and they know it's a two-liter turbo diesel. But if that's even. that. If you open up and you ask them, what's this? It's the engine. What's that? That's part of the engine. What's <laughs> that? They don't know cars. Yeah, they don't yeah. understand cars yeah. and, and the working of cars. And, yeah. and that's something that I, my dad learned us. Um, he's got major knowledge about cars and engines and 
real rebuilding engines, and we all used to help him doing that and learning by that. And well, we're still not at the level that he is, and yeah. probably never will be. But it made us enjoy it, understanding it. Why is it there? Understanding is why you mustn't rev an engine. Why it's cold because the car. Things that yeah. Yeah, people this, do not yeah. understand. Why? <coughs> Sorry, you don't understand why you don't need to do that. What is the reason for that? stuff like that? That that people don't know if you've not been taught. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, we had a big privilege and still have a privilege. But he's still with us and and uh, we enjoy and that's his passion as big as big as myself and my dad's mm. and my brother yeah. and yeah that's that's but it's nice yeah. and i think you you also gain so much more appreciation for cars now that you actually know the inner workings of it yeah definitely yeah well mm. the older older cars used to be much easier the newer cars are so much electronical yeah. and yeah. stuff you can't really do much on them anymore um, but your older cars are still had your carburetors and you had your spark plugs you could change and points and stuff like that 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 were a different kind of car, and and you could have stripped it down. These days, uh, the new electronic stuff, you could really yeah, limited, no, it's, it's very limited difficult kind of uh, working on it. And you have to do you want him done, you have to take him to the garage. You have to get him get a computer or something, that, and getting into the ECU mm. and getting checking and things. And but yeah, it's 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 a different kind of passion. But yeah, would you say that with newer cars and the way that they are more way more electronic than the older version, it takes a bit away of that passion that you would have for fixing your own cars and stuff, um, do you think you can still do it by yourself if you taught yourself properly or do you think it falls away in the sense like comparing it to having an old uh, Mercedes per se and you can go into the garage and you can take the whole thing apart and put it back again because it's all analog and comparing that to a newer car. Um, so do you think that like the, the, the passion for that falls a bit away with, with uh, newer? I think, yeah, they, they, there's a portion of it that's going away because it, you need to be highly, either very highly skilled mm. and have all the light, right electronical connection, computer, program, software to understand the car and versus your older cars, your old petrol carburetor cars, it's something, you, if it does this, you can just adjust the, the timing a bit this yeah, way yeah. or that way or that. You could have played with it. This one, if it doesn't do it, you haven't got a computer to connect to it, understand it. It's just different guys. Mm. So yeah, I would suggest Somebody that wants to be hands-on, the older cars are definitely with the better. way to go for And the nice thing about it, if somebody wants to get into the car thing or want to rebuild the car or restore a car, it's always easier restoring something like that, trying yeah. to restore something that's new, electronic, mm. and, and it's also probably much more expensive than anyway. Yeah. Also, if you make a mistake, it's much more yeah, expensive. It's going to cost you quite dearly <laughs> to, to fix something like that. What was, your, what was your first car? My first car was a Toyota Conquest, a little so, RSI yes. Conquest. Um, uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm mistaken. The first one was a Toyota Corolla twin cam. Uh, that was the old box shape. Oh, and yeah. Actually, yes. the second car was a Conquest. Was a Conquest. But both of them were Toyota con t twin cams. And yeah, that little Toyota Corolla gear of mine. Unbreakable. I do little little things to get it and put a free flow exhaust and you have to hear it coming <laughs> down the street. Oh, but they were, they were cars that just never, had, never stopped. They yeah. just keep on going and going and going and going. That's I remember, right. um, just to add to the, to the Conquest, when, when the my, dad, my dad um, bought his Conquest as well and the guy at the dealership said that if he can drive this car and break the engine, he'll give him a brand new car. He yeah. said that's it and he drove it from Cape Town to Hermanus on the daily and every day it just kept on going, never stopped with four kids and all that and we just kept on going with that car and it, it just went <laughs> yeah they, 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 the, little, the little conquests are good too. Yeah. I've got a few of them at, at our business and there's well some of the last ones and I think the one that's now standing on 600,000 regional motor and they just keep on going it's just never ending but, yeah, no, um, it's, but it's a good commuting and good working car yeah. and low maintenance it's low cost maintenance mm. it's not high expensive maintenance to keep it running mm. so yeah it's, it's a nice uh, going car for those who want some buyer advice, the autos are usually the more reliable cars to buy for first car. So if you really don't think your your daughter or your son have the expertise to be able to, I don't know, maybe switch the wipers on or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> rinse their car after a wash or something, or something yeah. the autos usually are and good at that. I think it's also yeah. one of the cars that you can find parts for quite easily. Yeah. Especially in South Africa because there is so many of them, so it's, yeah. it's easy to fix and all that. So, yeah. first car advice. Yeah. Not advice. <laughs> Not no, advice. Don't Please don't, advice, take, our uh, advice. don't yeah. take our advice. Um, opinion. Opinion. Very, very, very much. Thank you very um, much. <laughs> in any ways, we are sitting in a very cool collection. Um, and as you saw at the start, Luke and I were freaking out a little bit, um, which is also normal around cars. Um, but this is such an awesome collection you've built up with your dad and also your brother, 
over the years. Um, how did this collection come to be? Because I, I know you still use basically all of these cars. You still make sure they drive. You still make sure they work. How did this collection actually come to be? Well, we moved to Cape Town quite a few years ago and uh, having a passion for the cars and stuff, my dad had started, he was quite looking to some of the older cars, um, have some of the older Ford, car, Ford Model T's and A's and it really started off with actually adding some of them into the, well, buying some of them, restoring them, doing up and then from there on it just started growing and growing and growing and uh, my dad's got a passion for Mercedes's, he loves Mercedes's quite a lot, mm. so he's got a, quite a variety of Mercedes's. Uh, my sister, brother and myself also share that passion for Mercedes. It's just uh, for some German technology <laughs> and and, it just, it. and even some and even the older ones. I mean, the nineteen fifty three is the the Pontons or the Pagoda or the nineties. They actually sometimes looks nicer now even than that time. And, yeah. and if we park it next to something else, some actually some of the new stuff it still looks nicer mm. than that. So. It's on the Mercedes and stuff like that. And then we love American on muscle cars. Uh, we've got a soft spot for American mm. cars. And we love American kind of technology and things that they do. And we've got some muscle cars we added. And the collection we built together b between myself, my dad, and, and my brother is something we love. Mm. we got a bit of everything. Yeah. We've got a soft spot. I've got a little M3 Coupe. That it's something that I wanted to have... For, and I, when, when it came out, it was just not, I could just not afford it. Mm. Uh, I used to go to the Cape Town waterfront, the BMW Pavilion, and there was always one, and I go walk around it every time I go there two, three, <laughs> four times and, 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 and check it. And it was, it's, and I had a soft spot. And when I could afford one, because they were a long time off the market, and I eventually got a hold of one up in, uh, up in, up in the uh, Eastern Cape area, and I bought it from a guy that was on the farm that his brother used to use it, and he left. And I went back, brought it back here, clean it up, neaten it up, a little bit of work. But that's something I wanted, and, mm -hmm. and I bought it because we wanted it. Mm -hmm. And, and just, there's certain cars that you just feel you want to have them because yeah. they've been in a certain soft spot. And that's something that how our collection is. Uh, everybody's got their little favorites, and then there's uh, some investment cars we do and some different kind of things, and yeah. uh, some passion for different kind of mm -hmm. models. But we don't do a specific brand. We've got different kind of things. But of everything, anything that you like or that you, th you think... That's basically uh, <laughs> this is so yeah. everything that makes the heart pump quicker yeah, it's so. a collection of you know dreams yeah, and, yeah. and aspirations um i think uh, as you or i also share quite a passion for german cars well mercedes and porsche specifically and um speaking about old mercedes a lot of them are so still so timeless um just looking at the old sls my favorite old mercedes is a e500 evo 2 and with a quite obnoxious boxy wing that probably doesn't do much. Um, but it just still looks so cool to this day mm. because there's not a lot of, you know, exaggerating lines or anything that really makes the car, um, you know, look quite badly in, in a few years' time. Like modern cars really do take chances in terms of their designs and some are weird and wacky and some, some are, you know, questionable, but... It's it's interesting to see how these old cars actually come to age. How some of them really look very nice. Mm. Um, but if I if I could ask, I don't know if you can even answer this. But would you say there's a favorite in the collection? Would you say there's like a top three for you, or are these majority very even? That's difficult. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <coughs> I probably all depends what you want to do. But uh, Mercedes is they some of the Mercedes is just like the Ponton convertible, it's 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 just that Sunday drive convertible out, and it's Mercedes has got that soft kind of a mm. um, floaty cloud, floating yeah. kind of couch yeah, yeah. drive. It's, it's like fantastic having a bed. sofa underneath you while you're driving. Uh, up that's the road. right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and it's just a nice drive, yeah. uh, very nice, easy. Um, so that definitely yes. Um, then I'm mad about the 450. Uh, the 450 <laughs> just makes my heart pump. But yes, of course. You mentioned Austin, Samantha, and I'm maybe jumping the gun. If you take me, tell me. Give me a car on the road, will be the 450 and, and front hook oh, up and there down. There you go. Yeah. There you go. That's, it will be a few times up and down. Yeah, yeah, well, of course, just, it's a weekend. Overnight. It won't be I mean, a day. You get to yeah. the bridge it's a day yeah, thing. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Samantha, you only get one drive. He gets, yeah, he gets quite multiple drives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. And uh, then I've uh, got a Land Rover that's uh, just a soft spot. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. one of the things I've 
bought quite a few years ago and, and did something that grows in you and, and and a lot of people say Land Rover leaks well, yeah, well, it's just yeah. fair. Mine no, doesn't, so I'm sorry about yours. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and a, I saw a very nice stick on a guy's car. It said, should Toyota takes your places, but Land Rover brings you home. I owe it to own a Toyota Eww. and a Land Rover. So, it's so you're, you're winning in both aspects <laughs> of life anyway, for that. But anyway, I'll get, then I'll get back. So it's, it's okay. Not yeah. worried about anything for that. No. So, yeah, let's, uh, I would say that between those three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you also have um, one or two armors, or I think... Yeah, we we got two hammers as well. Um, we got a H1, and yeah. the original military spec one that's been converted into the civilian. Okay. That's right. I think that was started by Arnold Schwarzenegger. One and yeah, one yes, yeah, I remember. It. So we got one, and I think there's only very few left of them in South Africa. I'm not sure, sure exactly. I think less than five, I think two or three of them. Um, it's a very nice drive. Uh, different. That's a truck. It's a yeah. big truck. It's a uh, six six liter V8. Turbo, um, big motor, Massive, diesel yeah. motor, nice big block, and it drives the whole lane full. Yeah. <laughs> so it's big. and then uh, my dad uh, imported him uh, H2 quite a few years ago, got converted to right-hand drive, and yeah, so that's it too. The H3 never kind of grown in us. It kind of yeah. felt mm. like uh, uh, something that doesn't. It's very show. Yeah, it yeah, it's, it it's looks very showy. Like I think with the H3, the H1 and the H2 were like. You know, very true to what the armor was, but yeah, the, the H3 sort of gives me the idea them. of, you know, I want to be a G wagon, you know, flashy and stuff, but I still want to be something like my older brothers. Mm. So, yeah, but that's such an interesting car to actually own and have because not a lot of people do. And I mean, you probably don't have any problem with taxis trying to overtake and stuff because you just, just. No, I don't know. For some reason, I'm keeping out of it. Out <laughs> they of just, my way. just I don't keep know a why, distance. Some, yeah, oh, keep no the, explanation for that. Probably, that's yeah. right. <laughs> Do you actually get to use them often? Because they are big cars sometimes impractical to drive on the road. Not as often as we properly supposed to be. But yeah. um, we, about two weekends ago, we took the hammer out for. went camping for the long weekend and we used that to win tow the caravan and went camping for the weekend and that was actually nice again mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I was getting it out there and did a bit, put about 300 k's on again just yeah. driving it but it's still a nice drive yes it's a truck it's a big vehicle a bit noisy but it, it's Why just not? part of the yeah. that's just part of the drive yeah. 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 That's, that's to the experience of, of owning the car so the Luke do you have anything else you'd like to ask yeah, I've, I've, I think um, through the whole I would say all the years that you've had this passion for cars is there one story that you can think of perhaps that stands out um for you with no, one experience yeah, experience or anything that you that you yeah, experienced in in, in specifically on the car scene for i think something that, that, that opened my eyes a bit i mean there's a lot of experience a lot of stuff we did as family and 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 samantha and stuff as well but something i went that is a uh, I, I had a porsche panamera on a while and i went to porsche had a driving course at Kilani one uh, on a, on a uh, weekday, and that actually I think was one of the highest points. And the fact that we that day it was soaking, it was raining, cats and dogs. I promise you, it was non-stop. Mm -hmm. And they took us with the cars around the track. They okay, first of all, your car had to go to Porsche to be verified and everything right, and tires and all that. So we took us on the track with instructors and instructors and doing things. And realizing what the car actually could do with that weather, wet weather, going around a track, going into a corner at, at 160, 180, going in, but you would probably never think about doing mm. that with water and that speed. And actually really realizing what your car can do, mm. what you can do, what you mustn't do. I think that was quite an like experience. Like an eye-open experience to see the value of that car in, it's in just that sense. Also very clever from Porsche, of course, because j it just shows like the capabilities of their cars. It's mm. such a testament to what their cars can actually do in, in you know, sometimes horrible conditions. Mm. Um, so yeah, very cool that brands actually do have those experiences. Yeah, just to, to show you what, you what you're capable of with, your, with yeah, their product. Yeah. And, uh, Definitely, and then the lo and the other one is the Samola Eagle Climbs. Oh, of um, course, we are we are this year due to COVID we couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, but the last three three years now, we've been doing it, and that's for me and her always. That's a must. We have to go do it. It's just sitting there. It's three days: Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday is classic Friday cleaning. Saturday is your your shootouts, and then Sunday shootouts on the final. But just sitting there. 
and hearing the cars and the guys when we used to we go to the Le Mans VIP stand yeah. we kind of saved life through the year because that's that's the spot mm -hmm. to be and you got the cars pulling away from you get warming up burning tires and, and just everything that you can think of for a car show is happening and going home tonight you'll actually smell the tire rubber <laughs> smelling yeah, in your see. clothes it's, it's just and then tomorrow morning but half past six, seven o'clock, you're back there. Yeah. And, and you're there right through. If it rains, it doesn't rain, sunshine, doesn't, you're there the whole day. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it's fantastic. And then to share that with her of is really nice. I and mean, she enjoys it as well. And yeah, so I think special that's, experiences. That's, that's Luke Sander, I'll share such an experience with you too. Thank you, Martin. Don't worry about it. That. We'll, I'll we'll make sure of it. Yeah. Um, but I want to thank you very much for being here. Yeah, thank you for thank giving you. us the opportunity. Um, I think it's very cool for us to just gain some more experience and some... Um, knowledge also it's very cool to see how fathers and daughters share the same passion yeah, yeah. Um, and how many things come to be you know certain people like other things certain people's passion for cars start in other ways um, but I want to thank you for being on here yeah. uh, we enjoyed it we enjoyed yeah, it for it taking the hard. time and just you know, yeah. chatting a bit about yeah. our cars and the passion for it and everything. we really appreciate it a bit yeah. less beard oil a bit more serious chat yes a bit yeah. more serious chat this time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Thanks very much, and uh, it's an honor to be cool. part of it. That was quite insane. Uh, was, I really yeah. enjoyed that. Um, I do apologize for Luke and I rambling along in between <laughs> some very Cutting insightful in conversation. Yes. Because, yeah, it was, as I said... Um, we just have a lot going through your mind, and you, you try and, and, and get it out as quickly as possible to yeah, discuss it. There is a lot to say, there is a lot to there chat about. There is a lot about. to say, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but we just wanted to, again, show, like... You know, Samantha's it's not just a man's no, world. I know what she's going to do now. Yeah, oh, I know precisely <laughs> what she's going to do. I, I do hope you enjoy this. Yeah, this, uh, is, this should be good. This should be... There you are. There you are. There you are. Um, <laughs> I've just I've, I've, I've lost all sense of what is reality and what's not in those few seconds my heart is beating at about 170 to 190 beats per minute probably now I might die in the next 20 minutes um, I don't know how you feel uh, <laughs> that was a, a Shelby Mustang Super Snake with uh, a lot of horsepowers just also yeah. some uh, supercharger and um, quite a beast as you heard now and uh, I don't really know what to say now. I think that concludes our podcast. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, that's probably the best way we could have ended this off. Um, yeah. But thank you for joining. Um, please like, share, subscribe. Don't want to sound like a YouTuber. All those if you don't things. want to, just don't. Just don't. Um, otherwise, do follow us on social media. Leave we comments, engage. Tell us what you guys think. If yeah. you have ideas for stuff, yeah. let us know. If you like Peter Cruises, I don't know we'll if you're welcome. You. Uh, yeah, Fiat yeah. Multiplus. Yeah, I also don't know. I don't know. Yeah, That's but I uh, do hope you enjoyed it. Do hope you got some insight into um, why these people also have their yeah, passion, yeah. how insane it is. Luke and I will now go marvel at the creations and that engineering have, yeah. marvels around us. Mm -hmm. um, so hope you enjoy it. Um, yeah, thank and you. We will see you. We will see you next time. Yeah, we'll Cheers. see you next time. Cheers.